Hello, everybody. You're joining us since April 5th, 2021. Oh, who's that smiling face? Hey! Who's that, who's that Abby character? Hey! I'm not going to be in a Skype box anymore. Not a Skyper today. He's got a whole, he's got his whole thing. I got a, I got a, I got a beer. Hands. Nope. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm super, 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 super pumped. In fact, I'm so pumped that I'm going to, uh, get this, uh, PX3 extra out. Oh, okay. Hey everybody, we're gonna start weird. Oh, I gotta hit the thing. I gotta hit that thing. Hello. Ooh, there we go. Okay. Right, hello everybody. We're gonna get started with weird things here in just a few minutes. Uh, it's just the three of us today. Andrew is uh, preoccupado, and he's been busy at work uh, the past few weeks. And so that's why we've been off, but we're back now. Justin is is here. Ryan's here. He's around. I'm still here. Still here. Let it be known that I was able to drive across the country, move across the country mm -hmm. in less time, and then get back to my normal duties in less time than it takes Andrew to write a book, which I'm only putting in air quotes because I don't know the proper way to use air quotes. <laughs> a book. <laughs> Ah, there we go. There he is. Hello. Yeah, what uh, up? Uh, uh, how was uh, how was the cross country drive? Oh my god. Uh, uh, not terrible actually. Um, I was I was kind of expecting for it to be um, more like trips that I've done in the past, where like when I used to drive from Florida to upstate New York and stuff like that. Um, but a few things are different. Number one, uh, podcasts, binge listens. Um, number two, uh, radar cruise control. <laughs> pretty, pretty crucial. Pretty crucial radar cruise control, uh, which is basically just so you know, like regular cruise control. You set a speed. Which, by the way, I did not have any cruise control i i did not have a any kind of cruise control on any vehicle that i've ever owned uh until this one that i that i wow just got. even even the manual stuff even yeah no the 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 07 matrix which is i bought in my you know uh 20s and then uh you know just kind of kept using because i'm not really like a car guy i was cheap and didn't want uh to get cruise control added to it um, but this one has radar cruise control and basically it's like, you know how like regularly with cruise control, the only thing that sucks is that like when you get around other cars, you just got to keep an eye on you not rear ending somebody because you're going too fast. Uh, in radar cruise control, it starts breaking when it sees people in front of you. Front of you. Oh, okay. Does it return to speed when... Yes. Wow, that's fancy. Yeah, so that's fancy. It makes driving long distances a lot easier, and For it sure. makes staying uh, under the speed limit really easy because oh, you can yeah. just set it for 10 miles over, which is, you know, the, the acceptable allowance unofficially. Right. Uh, well, that's awesome. You know, I, uh, I had uh, not as long of a drive, um, but I did have my own little trek last week. Yeah, you went out. I was there was there was a moment where I I was wondering whether or not I would be going through that region when you were coming back from around San Antonio because oh. I was uh -huh. I was only a few hours. I was definitely hours behind you, but but I was only a few hours behind. Oh, you. fun! Yeah, I went down to to San Antonio uh, on Thursday to get my first shot. Uh, nice. I, got, I got the Pfizer. The Pfizer. The Pfizer one, so I'll be back in about two weeks. Have you from Googled now. Pfizer face? No, what is Pfizer face? There's apparently a uh there is a a <laughs> side effect. Oh no. That you get like kind of a, a, a weird face with the second shot of Pfizer. Oh wow. Wait, really? Yeah. Uh 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 uh, uh 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 yeah, is there a link between Bell's palsy and the vaccine? 
Wow, yeah, that's. No, I, I definitely had. Oh, okay. I, I think you did too, didn't you? I think you're muted. I don't know if I. Yeah, I think you're muted. There you go. There we go. I, I don't think I had Bell's pausing. I might have. Yeah, uh, there was somebody on Night Attack. Maybe it was uh, Brett or someone. But 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 there was like a. Oh, you know what? I think it was um, uh, Andrew Heaton. Heaton sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. It's um it's wild because like on the one hand, like whatever you're just kind of numb or whatever, and you yeah. think it'll go away, mm -hmm. and then you find out after a little of the googs that it's like. Nope, for some people, never goes away. <laughs> and then it's just like, okay. And just nobody knows, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the trust index says that this is a not true claim. The, Pfizer the connection face. to Bell's palsy or, or Pfizer face? I, Pfizer face. Um, I, I definitely know somebody who has it. Or is uh, that? You son of a bitch. Is that is that offensive or not? I, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. We're finding like, it out. Fuck you, Rick Berman. Okay, so. <laughs> Play kit. Play kit got Pfizer. I went, I went forward in time and got the Pfizer vaccine. <laughs> uh, hey, anybody in the chat getting our secret missives from the afterlife? Are there any night attack fans in the house? No, I, I, I didn't say that. I, I mean, maybe they're hate listening. Maybe. Well, they'd have to pay to hate listen. Uh, well, I've paid to hate watch things. Um, I do know. I hate watching. Please, like, everybody, be aware. I did not mean to export the last episode in uh, stereo. <laughs> I, I meant to do it in mono. Oh, I actually thought. Uh, wait, the first one or the last one? Uh, both of them. Both apparently. of them. Yeah. Did you did you like it like that? I did. Oh yeah. Some well, people are, are the people are in their cars did that. not like. Yeah, like, yeah, did not like it. Yeah, some people were like, "I'm literally deaf in one ear. Please don't do that." Please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so no, uh, it will be it will be uh, uh, it'll be a mono going forward. Yeah. I'm gonna give myself mono. We're gonna catch mono. Yeah. The kissing disease. It's, yeah, it's a social disease. <laughs> social disease. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what that's what they used to call that's what they used to call uh uh what's it called uh syphilis just i just thought it was all stds yeah social diseases was just like the, the polite euphemism for for all like give me but but, but like specifically like syphilis is the one that causes certain people's face to cave in that is true yeah that is true i mean if gone untreated right how are the blinds the blinds are great we we installed a bunch of blinds yesterday. We went to IKEA. Are they like regulars now? I've got a lot of things. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I, like I just know that there's certain words that I can't, like, I can't, you I can't, can't help not, but not I mean, it's say just it. like, like um, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, I actually have to write down notes because I'm I'm making Austin observations, but I kind of want to save them for when we're recording things. Um, all I'll say is, uh, boy, a lot of stuff closed on Easter. Yep. Austin takes Easter a lot more seriously. Oh than, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, buckle up also like, um, uh, so many silly rituals, like it's 1130 Sunday brunch time and you order a beer and they say, uh, well, let me bring you some queso. And you're like, why, why are you bringing me queso? And then they're like, you want queso. And then they hand you a half order of chips and queso. Yeah. And then they hand you your beer and they're like, it's against the law for you to have a beer without food. Oh, gotcha. You wanted that queso. You wanted that like, queso. And I'm like, ah, thank you for that queso. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Can I do a show? Okay. Here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, as always, live in Austin, Texas, joined with Brian Brushwood. As per the huge. Who is live in Austin, Texas, of course. Yep. And we're joined with, uh, of course, you know him, you love him, Justin Robert Young. And he's, Justin, where are you live from today? I'm live from Austin, Texas, where yeah. I now yeah, yeah. live. Can we harmonize? Um, <clears throat> we'll do, uh, we'll do weird, uh, weird, weird things. Ready? Weird. Ready? Three, two, yeah. one. Weird, weird things. things. Uh, 
Bryce, where yeah, you have you have to come oh, in with the like, yeah, yeah. Oh. like yeah, at the end. Try it one, okay, more time. one more time. Trailing, one more time. Three, yeah. two, one. Weird thing. <laughs> he, didn't do, he didn't do the ooh. I did it. it was, oh, okay. Right. We got to do it at the end. We, Should we do it one more time? Yeah. Can't, <laughs> just to be safe. Just to be safe. Three, just uh, two, just one. a quick one. A quick one. Okay. Yeah. Weird, Weird things. things. Bob. All right. Hello. This is the podcast <laughs> all about God, this science is and yeah. space and oddities of the world. Thank you for joining us. Barbershop quartets. Uh, <laughs> so well, one, poor, one, poor one of our, well, one of our, have to hire a fourth person. Well, one of them yeah. would have to actually show up to work, you know, uh, like, like he's or supposed to. Or move to, to yeah. Austin. He could move to Austin if he wanted to, but it wouldn't help him finish his book on time. So know who we're Andrew Maine is out. Oh, yeah. He's out for this week. Oh, Andrew. An of course. Andrew Maine. Yeah. Andrew. Andrew Maine. Uh, yes. <laughs> so Andrew we've Robert Maine. So we've got some stories here for you guys. Uh, I'm going to tell you ahead of time. I'm going to I I'm going to read this news report. But while I'm reading, I want you to percolate a little bit on uh, if I gave you a lot of money, how would you solve this problem? OK, OK. In Anchorage, Alaska, uh, Costco shoppers have been attacked, harangued, bedeviled by ravens. Ravens are stoking, staking out uh, a local Costco and are stealing just stealing people's foods um <laughs> i mean for, uh, uh, first of all 100 percent believe it uh ravens too smart for their own good um uh, I, 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 mm -hmm. uh do you know what ravens sound like can can you do ah. a, a raven impression i, I think yeah like, ah, ah. okay ah. uh ah. bryce ah. 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 uh maybe more caw, 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 caw. <laughs> uh, like here in austin it's starts off like a half cough and goes ah. okay are those the ravens or the, or the grackles i don't know i don't know either <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 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 shoppers have reported that uh, some of their meat uh, had been just stolen out of their cart, uh, a little bit like a, like a four by six inch piece of meat. Are they working together? Are they working in herds the or flocks, the, the, the ravens, to get the meat up? Because I can't imagine one... One little raven getting getting a whole uh, meat ravens package. Ravens are pretty big. We're not talking yeah. about gra grackles are tiny, ra uh, crows are bigger. Ravens are kind of um, I don't sizable. Know. They're, they're big enough to carry letters. I know that much. Well, sure, yeah, exactly. But 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 even if they're larger birds, like it's one thing to just pull it out of a cart. Right. Yeah. But that's not I guess stealing is really what what I want to interrogate here, because like stealing presumes if, if, that they if, are if, taking if you want to see it well, in I, person. You go to eat, they're surely eating it. You go to the Whole Foods on 6th Street or 5th Street in Lamar here yeah. in Austin, Texas. And what you'll see is you'll just sort of see left, right, left, right, just sort of standing, waiting, watching. Yeah. And then you leave them uh, uh, tater fries alone for just a minute. And it's just like left, okay. right, walking towards you. Wait, 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 wait. Ah. They definitely and they don't they don't fly away. What they do is they're like, it's in my mouth. Left, right, yeah, left, right. Left, Look, all right. So, right, so that's left, scavenging, right? right? So yeah. the idea that there is pre-produced food out for for wildlife, I totally get. If we're talking about, you know, a a a a. a filet mignon or a strip steak or something like that that's in the cellophane i could understand that they now have learned okay there is meat in there i want to eat that meat right and i could get them ripping it out of there and eating it there but stealing to me makes it seem like they're they're like like you know they're handing it off from one beak to another in in in, in the heist of the century well uh I suppose scavenging to me would look more like uh, like like peck peck peck. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Oh my god! I'm eating. Oh, you caught me by. Uh, whereas stealing is just like, all right, don't look, don't look the other way. Just go and drag this around the corner. Exactly, but no, but taking it some. That yeah. that's my point. Yeah, yeah. Is is uh, are these? Uh, do we have information on this, Bryce? Uh, I I mean, they're certainly wh whether they're eating them there or taking them somewhere else to eat them. They are specifically targeting food. Um. To, to consume uh someone uh one of the reports here is of someone having i guess 
small mi mini melons like in a mesh bag and the ravens trying to get through the bag to to get at uh, the melons, uh, there's reports of them actually with uh, like a plastic uh, plastic wrapped meats uh, where they had pecked into it. And so once the people had gotten home, they hadn't stolen the meat, but they got home and they realized that they had pierced through the plastic. Gotcha. So they're being vagabonds, brigands, yeah, goons. Yeah, they are posted up and they know what food looks like and they are going to take your food. I will say this. Alaska is uh, not for humans. It's for right. animals. Right. And the fact that humans live and, there and, is and Russians and and Russians. Yeah, you can see them from your porch. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, there used to be a, a bridge, a land bridge. Yeah. 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 I don't think so anymore. I'm just saying uh, you are correct. Not for humans, only for animals and Russians. And Russians. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Both of which could take down a fifth of vodka within 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've known. Well, Katie, our friend who who used to work uh, as a, a a part of the crew for Flying Wild Alaska and Ice Road Truckers, she spent a lot of time in Alaska, and it's like it's just kind of in like uh, the most metropolitan outpost you could possibly think. Like like even like Anchorage cities are like they're cities; they got all the city stuff, but there's just kind of a different way of living. And, and much in the same way that there's a different way of living when you're on a island. You know, for for any kind of island living, you just have to understand that things don't show up as fast, and there are are uh, certainly weather hazards that that don't happen in in island living. Well, so 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 are we afraid of this trend spreading, or or where, uh, what's where? well? I'm gonna give you, let's say, ten million dollars. How do you solve this? I mean, you poison everybody's meat. And you have signs that says, if you're a human and you can read this, huh? all of this meat is poisoned. Okay, Please so, mm -hmm. pretend to buy it. Use these Monopoly dollars. Walk outside and rehearse Those the following the transaction line. inside the building. Yeah. Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, re rehearse right. the following lines. Oh, no, my meat. Please don't steal can't, it. No, can't. Can't do it. Brian, I hate to shoot down your oh, plan, but I'm going to okay. shoot down your plan. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have the actual citizens of the town be a part of this instead we're going to have to we have 10 million dollars if 10 million dollars we're going what to build another town identical to the town that is <laughs> pretty good that is there right okay. them. we're going to move them temporarily all yeah. the citizens all the citizens temporarily how, into the other town how much okay? is a nuke like one one thousand dollars right like get them all there and then no 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 come, come on what? The Why EPA money? would never let you nuke a bunch of birds. Here's what you need to go. Here's what you need to do. We're then going to hire actors. Or like the Environmental Plutonium Agency. I'm right. <laughs> the way they're selling nukes. <laughs> uh, we're then going to hire actors to play every role in that town that we've relocated the actual townsfolk to town two. We're getting right? Twilight Zone them. So next thing you know, they're all actors. Yep. And they're doing exactly what you said, saying, oh, this meat, this meat is made for ravens. Right. A pity that I, a human, must eat it. Uh, and then the ravens think that they got something going on. Right. Oh, no, it's poison. At that point, when all the ravens are dead, we bring the townsfolk back. They give a standing ovation to right. all the actors. The actors bow. And then all the townsfolk laugh at the dead rape. And then we reveal that all of the townsfolk that just showed up, they're all clones of the original. It was the original city that, that got killed. All the meat was the original citizens. Spoilers. And then they have to decide, <laughs> like, are they going to be cool? I think, that will count, I think that will count against you when we create the, the value of these proposals. So, okay, so the, idea, uh, the ideas are... Uh, poison the meat yes. and just yeah. kill the the ravens and clone the town, but and also then also the destroy the ravens. All right, if I if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do a dumb idea that is a uh, uh, super dumb, dude, less come on. less <laughs> uh, dumb than the hit, one hit, I said. No, hit me with the dumb. A dome over the Costco. Costco dome. Okay, Costco okay, dome. I like that. Okay, <laughs> hold on. I saw. 1980s the blob yeah and the way they did it was they lured the blob into an ice skating rink mm -hmm. and then they just turned on the ice skating rink and it froze the blob yeah astrodome houston texas 
big old dome. Sure. Get the birds in, turn <laughs> up the cold. They eventually uh-huh. get real cold. Yeah. Gas them. These birds live in Alaska <laughs> outside. Yeah, you're going to get them from, from Anchorage, Alaska, down to Houston, you, I, I don't know if you could get the, the Astrodome cold enough to bother the birds that live in Alaska. I am almost <laughs> certain. Hold on. Bryce, That's a very good uh, point, I, I, I do believe you're, you're going to have to do some Googling because I am okay. almost certain there was a early 80s movie about a swarm of bees that was trying to get into a Volkswagen Beetle. I thought you were going to say, I could have sworn there's a movie and it's about a bunch of birds a bunch attacking. Of, a bunch of bad I news can't, bears. I can't think of the, the movie with the birds. Of, what was the movie with the birds? Are uh, you thinking of 1978's The Swarm? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, just see if you could confirm that the way that movie ended is they drove into, if not the Astrodome, something like it. And then they turned down the AC to below 60. And then they're watching carefully as it finally gets so cold that the bees are like, well, I don't know. <laughs> and then they just leave it alone. Um, I'm almost certain that's a real thing. I think they use a flamethrower in this one. So there might be another. Oh, the, maybe the Savage Bees Probably. from 1976. Probably. However, I remember <laughs> it being a plot point that like the Volkswagen Beetle, for some reason, uh-huh. uh, uh, was airproof. And I'm like, I, I feel I like don't we've got a spinoff true. podcast already. <laughs> it's just Brian watching the- movies <laughs> about bees and we call it bee movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no information about how the savage bees ends. Uh, unfortunately. All right. Everybody find us, find us that information. Get yep. it to us next okay, week. So as, you, as a matter of so, fact, uh, uh, everybody, but, there's the, the okay. world's foremost expert happens to be right here on YouTube. Very popular channel. Everybody hit up Mr. Beast and ask him about the bees. Yeah. He's primarily a bee man himself. Right. No, no, no. He loves hearing. He loves it when people ask about bees. bees. Uh, Bryce, uh, Costco dome, uh, fake I, town. I like the. I like the dome. I kind of like the dome a lot. I think it, it doesn't kill the ravens. Um, it encourages them to find somewhere else to you know hunt and gather. Um, and then you get kind of a, then you get a cool little dome. You kind of get a reverse dome, right? You kind of get a reverse snow globe in Alaska. Yeah. It means you have to maintain the dome and the, and, and the existence of the dome does not mean that we could, uh, uh that, that you're free from the Ravens. They're pretty smart. They're going to find out their way. <laughs> By in. the way, in the chat, I see you as the link to the moment that they take the Volkswagen Beetle and they push it covered in bees into into the astrodome okay. uh, uh sorry just so what was this this was the this savage bees, made for, apparently yeah oh this was the savage, this yeah. The savage yeah. uh and they are all right so we have a solution just that with ravens right well but how do you get them down to t- t- to the astrodome you you shout tax out, breaks uh, well uh, lots of messages they're all like ah oh, these are very plot sensitive messages that need to be sent by raven and do are there any ravens in nature who want to come by? So you're you're going to rely on the maesters? Yes, you're going to rely on the maesters to all send their ravens. All the Anchorage all maesters, all the maesters, calling use their all skills. Anchorage maesters. The Your is, help is needed. You can't just ask. You got to seduce them. We'll call them the maesters. Maesters. <laughs> I hope you're proud of yourself. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Family my wife, my show, Brian. Wife, my wife is proud. It's a That's family right. show, Brian. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Bryce. D- do we have an actual solution? No, this is just no, something that people. Just, yeah. uh, okay, just a real problem. That no, we we're just throwing it out problem. there. So, hey, uh, Anchorage for free. That's what you got. <laughs> Fake town, Costco dome. I, I thought you guys would go more high high tech. Maybe ten million dollars wasn't enough for it. Like. Uh, when I was thinking about this earlier, I was like, they make like little microwave guns or little like annoying, annoying lasers. You could like, boo, 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 boo. Oh, like, so you're, you're thinking just to discourage them. To get them go somewhere else. Yeah. God, don't, don't. I'm actually, I'm actually for, uh, uh, I don't know. You'd probably have to set a pretty reasonable fee, but I'm just, I'm, I say we, d- we deploy Bryce. Bryce just goes Please. up to Alaska and you just do exactly what hunt. you're doing. And as uh-huh. they land, they, you go. 
Go, go, go. get out of here. No. You're not, you don't belong here, Raven. Get out of here. I mean, apparently that's what all of the people of Anchorage, Alaska are having to do as well. And they need your help. They <laughs> need one more person. I'll tell you I who mean, else yeah, needs yeah, your yeah, help. Uh, before you do, just one last, uh, throwing it out there. Look, uh, in Switzerland, everybody is issued a firearm. And it's, it's a requirement. This is what it means to be a neutral country is you have to be prepared to repel an invasion at all times. Just everybody gets a pellet gun. Everybody gets a paint gun. Go, pow, 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 pow. Get out of here, bird. Pow, pow, pow. What's the worst that can happen? Everybody gets, you know, I don't know. Everybody loses an eye. Well, what if like when you got your Costco cart, it just came with a little holster and a, and, and a pellet gun? What if that was your Costco card? They're all like, <laughs> sir. Are you sure you belong here? And then you pull back your shirt and there's just like a, a paintball, fully loaded paintball gun ready to go. They're like, you're inside. With the Costco right, logo yeah. on uh, it. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Real quick, because this is more of a night attack digression. But uh, so my, my wife does not trust me to buy furniture alone. Uh, uh, because <laughs> so she she's armed decorating. you with a paintball gun. No, no, no. And, and, and <laughs> the joke we were making is that like one day I'm going to go, because I was going to go buy deck chairs and... Yeah. Uh, she was like, no, I want to uh, deck chairs, deck chairs. They don't have another name. <laughs> well, I mean, the chairs that I got were Adirondack chairs Adirondack. and you're all right. Okay. So, uh, uh, Brian is sponsored by big Adirondack. Exactly. Anyway, the, the point is the joke, which is now not going to be funny because we've taken too long to get there okay. is that Ashley was like, like, Oh, I'm just going to get a call one day and be like, I got the perfect outdoor furniture. It's a pile of guns. <laughs> here's what you're i know what you're gonna say it's not comfortable well we can get over it and if we ever need a gun boy there's a pile of them we sit on them during the summer we mm -hmm. shoot them during the winter it's perfect uh, that, that that is that is the level of my of confidence my <laughs> wife has in me yeah I'm, I'm, here's I'm, confidence uh, that i have in you the audience uh, and that yes. is to go on over to patreon.com slash weird things and uh, uh, support this program. I'm live in studio now, dude. So now, the, if the, people don't know, because the uh, the night the weird things audience may not know, like Justin moved to town. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm here. I am I am a resident now. I, I commuted. I commuted to work. <laughs> uh, it was it was, how, and I was late. How, yeah. <laughs> how long did it take for you to get over here? Were you getting annoyed? Where you're like, ah, hurry up, people. It's it's one in the afternoon. I don't expect this much traffic. Uh, I'm going to explore a few different options. I'm going to time it out a little bit, but no, our, our location spot is pretty crucial, like to go like, between me, downtown. Meanwhile, the I, I, I've already been place. planning out like the day that I make up an excuse to ride my bike over to your place, because the last time I rode my bike over to a friend's house was a long time ago. And I really want to do it. I think I think it's it's feasible. Yeah, you can go. I mean, we, we can get super local Austin stuff yeah. now on like which which roads to go down. But I think it's it's uh, it's great. Anyway, you can support this program, which is now going to be a lot more live and vibrant. And as soon as we get uh, Andrew on there, there'll only be one person that being brought in over uh, teleconferencing. And, and it's going to be awesome. It will continue to be awesome. Patreon dot com slash weird things. Thank you guys so much. I mean, if nothing else, we could guarantee it's not going to get less weird from here. Yeah. <laughs> like, only more weird. <laughs> uh, everyone, take a take a big sigh. Release. Oh. Oh, those bees, they all got frozen. Well, uh, uh, Na NASA, the, uh, the eggheads over at NASA... Uh, gave us gave us the all clear. We're good for the next one hundred years. Put it in the books, baby. We're one hundred years. Well, I mean, I I know we're good, but good for for. I mean, we're we're not just good. We're the best. What uh, do you think we're good for? I actually know this one. Okay, Wait, Justin knows uh, this one. We're, we're, Brian, we're, uh, I I think if I were to guess that there this is a press release that is an estimate of. We're pretty sure for the next hundred years, the movie Gravity will not actually happen. Uh, oh, 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 okay. The, the idea that space junk won't collide exactly. and space create junk. a exactly. super space yeah, yeah, junk thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're, you're pretty close. You're pretty close. Uh, have you heard of um, Apophis? A P O P H I S. Apophis. This yes. Sound, this sounds I, like an updog. Is don't... it related to an updog? <laughs> it's not an updog. It's not the Bank of America. It's uh, Apophis. No. It's my favorite TikToker. Uh, oh, okay. Apophis. Apophis. Uh, yes. What is, what what what's the sign? The big breakout video for Apophis. Uh, it's when he made fun of uh Piff the Magic Dragon, 
And he goes, oh, I'm not a dragon. I'm just wearing pajamas. I'm not Piff. I'm a Pofus. Um, well, I can see why he's so popular. <laughs> no, I got nothing. Okay. Apophis is an asteroid. We oh. are, uh, NASA has finally removed the asteroid Apophis from the risk list uh, for the next 100 years. There was concerns uh, that it would get close to Earth in 2029, 2036, as well as 2068. And they have confirmed that a, quote, 2068 impact is not in the realm of possibility anymore. And our calculations don't show any impact risk for at least the next 100 years. Where do you think, like, if, let's say this was the opposite announcement, and now it, we weren't all clear, it was like, no, for real, we're going to have to be on the lookout for this over the next 40 years. Like, is that an element of, like, global cooperation? Or, or do we just start tearing each other apart like we did with COVID? Well, if only there was, like, a proxy situation where there was an existential threat that was global and all anybody had to do was stop burning things to solve it. Um, but that's more opaque than an asteroid, right? Yeah, but... It may... Maybe it shouldn't be. But the asteroid, it's like all of a sudden you got a bunch of like... Um, uh, well, take a moment to look at these charts. Yeah, I'm running the numbers my way, and I use a Texas Instrument TI-99 calculator, and uh, looks to me like it's going to miss. I don't see what all the fuss is about. Well, the only difference is, is that with an asteroid, it would really, it doesn't take the world to solve the problem theoretically, right? It's not like we all hold hands and hum loud enough and the asteroid breaks up in orbit. Mm. Like, it would take... A, a, you know, maybe global cooperation in terms of money and resources. Sharing, yeah. well, yeah, and but then it would be governments cooperating. Time. Like, and, and like theoretically, we'd be doing probably a lot of the heavy lifting. It would be like, you know, uh, being able to launch maybe out of certain areas on, on planet Earth. That would be the larger stuff. But the United States, if we're going to send, if we're going to send the missile that blows up the asteroid, it's probably coming from the U.S., right? Um, maybe, uh, uh, it could just as equally be, so like the earlier you detect one of these things, um, the less you need to do to solve the problem. For yeah. example, like, let's say, um, let's say the international space station, technically that's not the United, not the property of the United States or whatever, but, but it's, it's enough mass that we could, we could shoot some, you know, Falcon heavies up there with enough booster, whatever to just move it. And it's like, if you get out there far enough, fast enough, just by virtue of hanging the out. The nudge, yeah, the nudge will mean more. The, the gravitational adjustment, right? Yeah. Where mm -hmm. it's just like, like, just hang out near the asteroid, get it to just yeah, correct course just a wee bit, yeah. and then you've saved the day. Now, the sexy one, the one we all want to see, the Michael Bay movie version is, you know, blow it up. But the problem that, that, is... That could create more of a problem. Exactly, yeah. right? So, so it's like, imagine one giant Manhattan-sized oh. rock hitting in the middle of the ocean uh, will have a bad day. But imagine breaking that up into 3,000 rocks that all of a sudden light the atmosphere on fire as they rain down all at the same time. But wouldn't, so, wouldn't they be more likely to burn up in the ass in, in the atmosphere? But, 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 uh, but, 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 but if there's around. enough mass, they actually ignite the atmosphere. As a matter of fact, uh, the uh, what was it, the K, uh, K2 event or the KL event? I forget what it is. The one that killed the dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, the latest thought is that there was enough mass that it, the friction ignited the atmosphere itself on fire mm. and you watched a ball of fire wrap around the planet earth twice and killed anything above ground and then uh, uh after that it was a bad day oh huh interesting well so, you know speaking speaking of kind of extinction level events yeah uh, do you guys know much about the event from the late, what is this? The late, oh no, where is it? Late, let me Google, the, the late Devonian, uh, period. This, this, would is, be a, this is the one with their, there was that, um, Reese's asteroid that broke into pieces. <laughs> this would have been about 359 million years ago. 
The no. late Devonian. I'm not here. He doesn't that. even want to. Yeah, he says You're, it weird, folks. This is this he is just it, to pick fun of me. He says it weird. Uh, the the late Devonian. Bryce, what is what is Reese's Pieces? <laughs> Reese's Pieces. Not Reese's Pieces. No, no it's not hoity toity like that. Mm. That's the fancy one. Reese's Pieces. <laughs> that's the work. That's the Joe, the old lunch mm. pail. Reese. <laughs> Shocky, please give me some of Reese's pieces. I knew we couldn't resist it. All right, go ahead. Reese's, that sounds like that sounds like royalty. That sounds like aristocracy. Reese's, please collect your Fabergé eggs. Your father almost stomped his Zapato. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had considered uh, uh, the 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 extinction level event at the end of the late Devonian period may have been. You know, kind of traditional, uh, uh, tra traditional things, right? Volcanic eruption, or or even an asteroid. There is now a new idea that it could that 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 period in the extinction uh, 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 involved could have been because of a supernova, sixty five mm. light years away. What? Now this is further than scientists would have believed that a supernova could affect Earth. They believed that. Uh, supernovas between 25 to 50 light years away would be in in range of, of attracting Earth, but 65 is just a little bit further. Uh, just just a little bit further. Um, they they believe that the the ions coming off of a supernova could have affected uh, the atmosphere, could have uh, created uh, you know brought in radiation, um, which which would have led to the extinction of the the the, the, the organisms of the time. Uh, wasn't um, this is almost certainly a separate issue, but um, uh, a, a, a gamma ray explosion, if I'm remembering correctly, would be uh, kind of like a supernova, only it would just uh, like 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 a like a um, oh what's what's the type of nuclear bomb that just kills everyone where they stand but doesn't ruin infrastructure of uh, radi radiant not, not, a, not a pulsar or, or a, a, uh, mm, no, i don't know somebody in the chat will have it but um but the idea that that a star could explode in such a way where it's just straight up just liquid Death. paper just wiping Quack. everything yeah mm. well th this could have been like that with extreme a gamma uh, bomb from uh, the marvel comics is what people are saying i don't think that's what i'm thinking of but yeah uh, with extreme ultraviolet X-ray and gamma rays, these supernova could have deteriorated uh, the Earth's atmosphere, the ozone, for about a hundred thousand years. So, for about a hundred thousand years, we could have just been bombarded by the offput of of the supernova. Can we? Oh. Can, uh, and that's what killed. Because I guess. Uh, all right. Welcome to stupid questions by by the gerbs. Like we don't know uh, exactly. Like if. There's no canonical like, and that's the crater that killed the dinosaurs, is there? Uh, yeah, there is. It's it's the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, if you look at um, uh, uh, Mexico from space, you yeah. see a very big circle that uh, happens to uh, uh, align, and it's because of the iridium that we see at a universal level across uh, uh, the entire globe that we know like that's where it hit. That's where, it, and it's mostly underwater, which is hard to find and all that stuff. Also, thank you to the chat. It's a neutrino bomb is what I'm thinking That's of. That's it, yeah. Um, uh, and so I believe a gamma burst is what I'm thinking of in cosmological terms, something that would basically just just wipe life, uh, yeah. just just a white wave of zip and, and, and everything is sterilized, which, which uh, mm -hmm. bring, brings me back to uh, and and for, uh, if we're heading somewhere, Bryce, uh, direct me back on course. Mm -hmm. But but man, do I not understand anyone who says it's not our destiny to get the hell off this rock? It's really hard for me to take it seriously. There was a, I believe, a New York Times article saying like, no, it's irresponsible for us to leave Earth until we know how to run Earth, and all oh, we can do is yeah. screw up other rocks. If we, we should be leaving Earth just to abandon the New York Times. <laughs> That's. <laughs> That, that, that's worth it that's worth it okay you know just get the hell away from this circulation uh uh yeah uh, I, I, I don't know i mean uh, I, I don't think that it will come to any anybody's uh a surprise this is a very space positive uh uh space pause space pause pro expanse uh, pro expanse podcast the one thing i want to get back to real quick though is about mm -hmm. that the, the 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 place in the yucatan peninsula so 
Bryce, based on what you're saying, like, is that like a like a lie? Like, if if, if it was caused by something else, like, no. We now have another mystery to solve. So this is still a hypothetical, and this is specifically for this this time period. So I, I, I I'm here to take it as full fact. Uh, so I, I, I like I like to find hypotheticals yeah. and I make them full facts and I repeat them to everyone I know. So which, my understand there are multiple why... extinction events. This would have been separate from the Yucatan. Oh, the Yucatan. So what what, what did this one kill? Uh, I mean, not as cool as the dinosaurs. I hate to break it to them, but like <laughs> that Yucatan one, dude. Dinosaurs dope as hell. If they got a bunch of sloths or like some amoebas or something, like mm. pfft, whatever. Who uh, cares? Yeah, boring. I... Waste the time. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I guess we would have had, let's see here, uh, whatever this little fella is, a TikTok. So some kind of uh It looks kind of like a like TikTok a, influencer. It looks like kind of like a, a like a salamander, but with a gigantic alligator face. And now you want to know what? I'm kind of sold. Pretty dope. <laughs> that looks awesome. Uh, you, I apologize. What do I, why am I apologizing to? The the TikTok. No, 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 no. The thing that killed it. Oh, well, so we this is a hypothesis that it could have been a supernova. I like to say fact, but please go ahead. <laughs> it could have been a supernova about 65 light years away. The scientists are this gives scientists something to look for as they are, you know, uh going through the layers of of the earth, uh, you know, from from that time period. Uh they're going to be looking for plutonium 244 mm -hmm. and samarium 146, which are not uh don't organically appear on earth. And would have been a smoking gun to uh, this uh, the, uh, to this radiation and these 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 waves uh, bombarding Earth. So this is one of those things where it's like I don't like to think about it at all because there's nothing I could do about it, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a loaded gun, uh, uh, thousands of 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 of. Uh, uh, fusion reactors are loaded guns. Anyone can explode and, and destroy everything right now. Um, and it makes me think of the psychological phenomenon that happened in Britain during World War II. Uh, there, there would be there would be known bombing runs from the Germans, right? Yeah. Uh, you could hear the bombs. You could hear the radio saying, "They're bombing us. They're bombing us." Mm -hmm. And it truly was. Please be alerted. Uh, we're, uh, we're having a bombing. Uh, we're having a spot of the bomb. There's a spot of bombs. Please secure bomb. your Reese's pieces. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Wait, you're making that the fancy. That is the fancy one. Okay, all right. Um, but the uh, uh, there was a psychological thrill that came along with the understanding that there was nothing you could do about it, where it was like, we're being bombed, and I'm either going to live or die right now. And there are people after the fact that described it as like the most thrilling, most alive they've ever felt in their entire lives. Um, so I don't know, I guess. So does this story give you some of those, those uh, thrills? Are, are you excited that we could be, I mean, and this was a lot, like this wasn't like a supernova happened right next door and, and everything was kind of reset. This was, Hundreds of, about a hundred thousand years of bombardment affecting the environment and it the does, biodiversity of the planet. It does it does reduce my overall contrast meter where it's like, what's the point? We're all we're all gonna get just as exploded. I mean, we all know we're headed towards the heat death of the universe, and some lucky few of us will have our heads frozen or be downloaded our consciousness into an android or whatever. But the odds are most of us are just gonna whatever snap at some point. A very nihilistic take on weird though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, 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 but, but, but it's also liberating. And then it's like, well, well, what's there to be worried about knowing that? that yeah, we got to seize the day. Right. Uh, especially when the day comes for us in the middle of the night in the form of the day from another star exploding. Exactly. Man, we're going to seize it. This is going to be, yeah. I don't know. It's good. I like, I like thinking about this kind of stuff. Like the, 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 the eventual limitations of, of mortality in society. Like that's pretty cool. It yeah. makes you happy you're here. Like there's, there's a, a big empty building and for the vast majority of the time it's empty. And every once in a while 
in the hi- history of Earth, it's a skating rink, and every once in a while, it's your birthday. Uh, oh, like, oh, oh, I thought you were about to say, and in comes a car full and, of and bees. In comes, no, during my birthday, <laughs> in comes a car full of bees, and they're like, just hold on, everybody. If we get it cold enough, we're we trying should to stop still, the bees here. We should still be able to do couple skate by the end of the hour. Just, just let me put the words, the end, three, two, one, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it, it shows you how lucky we are to all be here. Yeah. So, so does human it, life is kind of a gigantic mirror. Kind of rad. I, well, well and, and so, so in that world, in terms of like substantive changes, it does reduce my tolerance for anybody. Like, a, a, I think Werner Herzog was going off on some kind of like, well, we already screwed up planet Earth. What makes us think that Elon Musk is right for us to go to Mars is me, Werner Herzog. And then I'm just like, man, why don't, why don't you make a bunch of movies and let us go to Mars? Uh, yeah, I mean, Werner Herzog is he's his own. He marches to the beat of his own drum. I, I, I don't think I'm you could still tell me, looking for that baby Yoda. Did you see him? Uh, I don't think that there's any opinion that Werner Herzog could have that I'd be like, what? Oh my! The director of Werner Herzog? Okay. Oh my uh, god! Re- real, real quick, real quick. Um, <clears throat> headline says it's a clickbait headline. All right. Headline says Werner Herzog, Elon Musk. Uh. Danny Glover uh, and uh, 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 William Gibson all yeah. agree. Dream on this. blunt rotation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, I mean, do you click, uh, or is there a better name you would put in there? Of the, oh, that they all agree, or they yeah, disagree? Yeah, yeah. Or? Like, like, like would, would would you not want to know? Like, uh, what do they all agree on? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, totally. I mean, I, I, although I would say for all of them that they probably agree on a lot. Not going to Mars. I mean, I think they're probably all, I don't know where William Gibson lives, but I think most of them are California residents. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Well, I, I mean, we know that Elon Musk and Werner Herzog seem to be diametrically opposed on their opinions of going to Mars. Of going That's to fine. Mars. Yeah. 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 But I mean, like, yeah, they agree that they love the McRib or like. Uh, or, or the Big Lebowski was the best Coen Brothers film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you could sit those guys in a room and eventually they'd get to something that they all agree on. I would, pres- I would presume that even if, if, if Werner Herzog is, you know, poo pooing the idea of a, a trip to Mars or Elon's ability to do it, that they would probably agree on a, like, like they would probably find something else to, to agree on. Even the idea of the the problems that humanity faces, they would probably agree. Okay. What level of crime would merit the punishment being you have to be locked up with somebody you disagree with and you have to write 75 essays on things that you both agree with ever tweeting. Uh, crimes. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody who has an account on Twitter has to do exactly that. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's that would that would be that would be my that would be my crime. Uh, I, he, I'm a law and order tweeter. <laughs> uh, we got we got uh, an interesting one here. Uh, in uh, this is an interesting phenomenon that's happening in California and Nevada. Uh, um, bears. Yeah. Okay. Ba- yeah. Bears. Otters. Right. Uh, well, no bears. Um, what if you saw a bear? Mm. What would you do if you were out and about? There was a bear. You're walking the dog. I'd shoot it. You're on this. Okay, I'd shoot it um, with my latest Apple device because of its extraordinary ability to zoom in. Okay. I'd take that shot. Yeah. Post it on Twitter, Justin. You see a you see a bear. You get ready for your punishment. <laughs> I'd have to write an essay. You'd have on to write an essay with, with the, bear. the bears. Yeah, yeah. Right. and the bear's like, I really think you should ask my permission. Like, <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's kind of well, trampling on my privacy. Uh, uh, may I present you with this Cato Institute brief on uh, public ap- appearances? Oh, wonk bear! I didn't know it was you. <laughs> I have a white paper that I would like you to read. Uh, Jesse, you're walking down the sidewalk. See a black bear. Yeah. So what I've heard is that if you, the the biggest thing is, uh, if 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 a bear's around children, like then then it is evacuate, just move away as as slowly as possible, 
Otherwise, if the bear is just out, then the two things to do is a kind of make yourself very big, right? And then use like, hey bear, hey, like like very like reassuring but like forceful mm. language. Hey bear, yeah. Hey, hey bear. bear. Hey bear. Hello bear. Hey bear. Excuse me. Bear. What's going on? Bear? So, you, 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 so you're gonna you're, you're gonna be yeah, big. Your arms go up and you go, hey boo boo. And I go, yeah. Who yeah. wants a sandwich? <laughs> now, uh, now for both of you. Okay, so both of you. Uh, the bear approaches you. Yeah. And in fact, the bear is not growling. It's not roaring. It's not swiping at you. It's kind of cuddling up to you. I mean, am I moving? Sure. So it's, this, it's the bear is is not afraid or it seemed to be a danger to you. In this scenario, how bushy are our beards? How bushy would you like them to be? Very bushy. Then they like are. like ZZ top bushy. Then there you go. Okay, then I build a log cabin and I live with the bear. Okay. So the California Department of Fish and Wildlife um have been reporting apparently about this condition since 2014 where uh, black bears are seemingly unafraid of people going up to them and not attacking them. Uh, they are, are uh, quote, dog-like in their behavior. They are they have a fearlessness about them. Um, and how, why do you guys think that that would be a case? Uh, why, I mean, why would you think a black bear might be more personable to humans, uh, may have ex- may experience lethargy, have low uh, low weight, might be a little smaller. I, I would presume uh, if it's if it's in some of these places where you are running into humans all the time, that it's it's literally been like socialized on on some level about as domesticated as we could think of with bears. Because so so like we've seen over the last hundred two hundred years, sort of a, a, a biological pressure. To uh, more timid bears uh, surviving eating For, all the garbage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, California has tremendous expanses of public parks where I'm sure people leave food and feed bears all the time, and and that's just the the way that, that there is now a strain, a noticeable strain of bears that are really nice, nice hmm. ass bears. Okay, a domestic nabs. Uh, well, uh, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, would disagree. It turns out that they are finding that these bears um, are somehow contracting encephalitis, swelling of the brain. Just as good. <laughs> I didn't say how we were going to get there, Bryce. I just said that they were going to eventually fork into their own evolutionary strain. That's crazy. Number one, California should know better. If they didn't want bears mucking everything up, they shouldn't have put one on their flag. <laughs> Number two, uh, so so are they trying to treat them? You uh, no, um, no. Um, they they are finding there have been a lot of we're we're looking at a video now of of a bear. Uh, this is this is from 2019, uh, going up to a snowboarder, just hanging out on the guy's snowboard. He's just he's just hanging out. He's asking for pets. Um, on after they examined the bear, they found that it had this encephalitis as well as. Um, an unrecognized viral strain within it. Uh, they believe that it is possible that a virus uh, is been making its way through the black bear population since at least 2014 um, and leading to this encephalitis. Okay, so mm, number one, mm. why not everyone? Why not? Why not? Why not? Mm, bear blankets for everyone. Uh, Air blankets? Yeah. Blankets to keep them warm at night that are infected with the virus so that they can be friendly to everyone. Uh, well, because the, the friendliness is not the only uh, the only thing going on. Did they die them. earlier? Um, well, they, they just don't know enough about it. And they here, here's um, a statement from one of the, fi- the, the uh, wildlife um, veterinarian said, anytime a wild animal comes into our care, the best possible outcome is released back to the wild. That's just not possible for these neurologically impaired bears. We don't know what causes the encephalitis, so we don't know what, if any, health risks these bears might pose to other animals. And so right now, we don't have a good handle on why it's being caused, so it's, it's we, we, we can't just, they the when they go into human care, they can't just be put back in because they don't know what damage um, in the, that infection might cause. I mean, like, is it crazy to think that 
maybe they become the dominant bear and all the other bears are just called small brained because they're, 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 they're these big brain bears are nicer to everybody and we can generally agree a better fit as far as humanity goes. Yeah. And like in general, like everybody has a bear, but like they evolve from bulls, which is what we call other bears that weren't domesticated that didn't get yeah. their together. Oh, yeah. Like the ones that don't give hugs and, and belly rubs and kisses and you, you know, hang out with. Exactly. Why, why, why? This it seems like an opportunity. I think we should open up a pet store and sell these bears. Well, I think most bears are still in the natural life cycle. I think they're still like hunting and gathering. Oh, look at nature. you. Yeah, oh. The natural life cycle. How about <laughs> this? It's natural that they get some uh, cut up filet mignon. Yeah, dude. Here, here bear. Here, the, bear, come get it. The natural life cycle of a pomeranium is 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 to is to kill uh, 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 everything. Yeah, F just rain death. Right, Ow. pomeranian, just the a, 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 the pomeranian uh, fangs on your neck. More like sucking your blood. Pomeranian. Is Hell what yeah, doing. these dogs don't huh? give a they rat's got blood ass. on their teeth. It's a full Eat moon. You. And so, possibly vampires. Uh, so the black bear populations are not threatened in any of the places where they've been found. But uh, officials do say if if the bear is acting friendly to you, don't don't befriend don't it. Don't befriend it. it. Don't, don't befriend kiss it. it. Don't kiss it right in the mouth, guys. Come on, let's <laughs> knock it off. If you see a bear and it's being very nice to you, don't kiss it. Yeah, whatever you do, just make sure to treat it with like suspicion and disregard. Yeah, that's oh. the best way to not disregard, integrate but it in a society. Please, yeah, please, please coldly turn your shoulder. Yeah, whatever it. you do, don't have like colorful balls and start juggling it in front of don't. them. Heaven forbid they no. would start juggling balls. And exactly, then you're gonna go on a two man act across the country, and you know, There's eventually there'll be creative word. You differences. must never say. Do, 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 don't do, do, do. ever do that. Yeah. It'll yeah. activate them. That's a sleeper. Teach cell. them out they're of all, fire. They're all gonna. They're all gonna assemble and start a circus. The concept of awesome bears is as old as as, as bears themselves. It's as old as the famous teddy bear picnic. <laughs> <laughs> a hammer, a hammer, a deal hammered away at the, where the teddy bears have their picnic. Uh, so we got one last story here. You guys probably, you guys must have seen this, I believe. So back in 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope, which uh, takes the power of a lot of telescopes around the globe, um, uh, took that kind of famous donut picture of a of a black hole. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So about a, a week or so ago, uh, we got a new photo. We got a new photo of the black hole. Uh, here it is. We got a photo, new black hole photo just dropped. What do you guys think? That looks an awful lot like somebody just used a Photoshop filter on the old photo. It's, it's, it's weirdly specific and precise in a way that is hard for me to believe. It looks like a, uh, stock Mac, uh, uh, screensaver. Hmm. Well, the difference in this, so so this does kind of look like the blurry donut photo, but there's there's especially a big patch where you can see very specific bands, almost like like light trails or um, like even fur, maybe just like a very kind of brush, very sharp yeah. segment of it. Uh, that is because this is a photo of polarized light. Uh, this is this is a, a photo of, of of a light going in in a singular direction instead of in in all ways, and I, I guess that's what gives it some of the sharpness here. Um, uh, th this is just, I think it's interesting. We, we have kind of a new, um, a new understanding of, of, uh, I, I, I my, under my understanding is that, um, you know, you don't see a black hole because it is, it is empty, right? There's like nothing actually there. Um, but the, the light that you're seeing is polarized light that there is so much, um, so much strength in its gravitational pull that it causes the light to, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't even well, know how to describe it. It, it, but. it, it definitely, as I understand it, uh, the light spins up, it charges, um, uh, and, and ultimately uh, something along the event horizon splits apart. I don't know if, if you would say a neutrino or a photon or whatever, but at some point, but, but, but there is a release of energy, most of which gets sucked into the black hole, but some of which just sort of evaporates out. So, right. so imagine, imagine an unending flow of planets being thrown into a black hole. As those planets tear themselves apart, there would be a phenomenal release of, of visual 
uh, energy in in uh, out mm-hmm. there. Uh, so, something like this image here. It, it almost looks like we are seeing a um, like a, a planet kind of shooting off uh, rays. Um, this is um, the structure of the magnetic field along uh, that the jet of polarized light. So. I guess the light is being affected by the the magnetic field here. I I I think it's just like it's fascinating um, that a we can see such a sharp image now of a black hole, and we have a better understanding of how polarized light uh, you know in, 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 interacts with that event horizon. So, uh, just a little update there on the black hole. Yeah, black uh, hole sun. Won't you come? Um, I uh, think that we've. Got uh, all of our news stories here. You guys want to do some picks? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. A quick preview for what we're going to talk about on Weird thi- or Sorry. Uh, it's spoiler, spoiler time. Spoiler time on Cord Killers. Invincible is great. Very good. It's great. It's everything I love about the boys, but just with the gruesomeness turned down just enough for me to get away with watching it with my 13-year-old. It is chef's kiss great. Yeah, uh, th- this is pretty cool. This is like a this animated. It, and watching this, I kept thinking this reminds me a little bit of both. What was the was it Batman Beyond where he had the very slick kind of suit, but also the Boondocks. If you guys ever watched the Boondocks, yeah. it kind of felt it was kind of animated, kind of in between those two shows. But yeah, it's like an adult kind of superhero um, animated series, but not Amazon. quite as like x rated as as the boys are exactly no correct like, this like, is like more the, uh, rated the boys R. the boys uh i don't know i i tried to watch out with josie we made it like three episodes and i remembered what the fourth episode had or maybe it was the fifth i was like yeah i think we're done that's pretty you get yeah. you get the gist <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then uh whereas invincible we've really enjoyed there, there is in the very first episode one very very intentionally over the top anime style Akira graphic scene. Uh, but then outside of that, I found the rest of it super charming and really believable. Yeah, I I really dig it. Uh I uh I am liking watching a superhero thing that is not uh, it is based on on a on a graphic novel series that's already out, but I like it being kind of a thing that I just don't know what to expect yeah. and not everyone is telling me how it's going to end. Um yeah. so I I think Invincible is pretty cool too. Uh, uh, J.K. Simmons plays essentially, you know, their J.K. Simmons. <laughs> he plays himself, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, there, there is a group of superheroes. Spoiler to the end of episode one that is uh, murdered. Uh, but and okay. yeah. I, I love yeah. the fact that <laughs> I said spoiler. Uh, I love, yeah, I spoiler. love the fact that the names of all the characters are like one to one, not even trying analogs. And then, uh, uh, and then. Under a different name with a different backstory, Rorschach shows up, and it's great. And he does exactly Rorschach stuff. It's awesome. Nice. Uh, Justin, you got a pick? I haven't watched or read or done a lot of stuff because I've been mostly driving and assembling furniture. So my pick is a not pick. Okay. There we go. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Ah. So bad this last episode it made (laughs) civil war worse episode two had the most improved trophy i thought and then episode three came out (laughs) (laughs) wow wow Uh, yeah Uh yeah. you didn't like baron zemo uh like full-on like uh well the one thing you've been waiting for is what if i took this poofy collar and fluffed it up and then put on a mask now i look like a villain the least offensive thing of (laughs) of the entire like just uh (laughs) an unnecessary rave that would like look out of place in a fast and the furious movie like, yeah. like that's, it's like, okay, so now we're, I thought, now it's Fast and the Furious. I thought, I thought but, visually it was a treat. I I, I thought it looked like a uh, Blade oh, no, Runner. Oh, no, sure, thing. yeah. I, I think know. it really wanted to look like a Blade Runner. Thing. Yeah. I think yeah, it yeah. really, really wanted to do that. Well, I don't think sure, it but it's like, and usually Marvel's really, really good at the green screen stuff. That was like, like one of those times where I'm just like watching it. And I was even, I was out of it. We had unpacked all day and we were like watching it in bed and I'm like, 
that like you know like that they'll do those things where it's like oh did you know like here's where all the green screen was like it's like the shire or you know uh, when they're uh, doing something in star wars it's like oh really they were standing on one little thing and everything else was painted in there's one thing where they were like walking down a uh, a pathway and it's like no that's all obviously like green screen it, it just story-wise it was offensive uh, uh visually it was like not necessarily poor it was just so out of place for the, the universe they've built and boy do i just not understand where they want to go with any of these characters and I, it, I it's made me actively less interested in characters that i otherwise cared about in contrast to wandavision where i now want to know everything about everybody that was in westview this ooh, i think i think they, they made the right call giving them the old swaparoo uh in terms of the order yeah I, and there's a lot uh, there's a lot of things where i feel like i've for, i've either forgotten things that they've set up in previous episodes or they're just characters from other movies that i don't know like i don't know the zemo guy i barely remember the blonde lady who's at the end of this last episode i was like who why are we what are we even doing yeah i only recognized her because we had just watched like earlier this week uh the winter soldier and she okay so she's from that right she she was the the friendly neighbor who is revealed to be a shield agent who is there to keep an eye on captain america Hmm. and then There's and then a, a startling turn to it, but like, yeah, no, Zemo is he was the villain in Civil War, and had oh, the like he's the one who organized yeah all of the things that made the Avengers fight right, and like the spoiler for that movie, the one of the most impactful things that I think the MCU had ever done, and this was them introducing the character of Black Panther, is now having succeeded. Zemo wins. Captain America and and Iron Man are fighting. The Avengers is torn to shreds. And to celebrate, he goes up to like the top of this mountain where Captain America and Iron Man are fighting and he tries to blow his brains out. And and like the the big epic moment is uh Black Panther like with his Black Panther hand covering the gun that is like in the open mouth of Baron Zemo. And it's like that's that's the emotional weight you put on that character. Like you brought in a in a a, a superhero movie, a credible moment where a character, a bad guy was going to commit suicide and you had mixed feelings about whether or not it should happen before this other character comes in and saves him and it's like and then he's just, I don't know, young Sheldon uh, in, in this one. And he's just like, like, I don't know. I'm a rich guy. Gray Poupon, please. Like, um, let's go to the club. I'm Baron Zemo. Like, Everybody thought I was dead until 20 minutes ago. Uh, shows up, orders a tequila. Aren't you dead? You're like, We're, you know our type, right? You know, it's me. I'm crazy. <laughs> These wild and crazy guys with me. And anyway just i don't know yeah so uh that's my i wasn't a fan i don't know maybe it'll be greater later but I, I maybe it won't not. maybe it'll be fine <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it won't um i've got a pick uh i enjoyed this game when it came out a few years ago but i did not finish it or or spend too much time with it and they've kind of um revamped it refreshed it uh this is the uh, game from uh, Zaum called Disco Elysium. Have you guys heard of Disco Elysium? Yes, I've heard of it. Yeah. I, I've heard it's the hottest club in the afterlife of the Greeks. Okay, uh, so you play a uh, cop who shows up into shows up to a small kind of war torn city, and you are investigating um, a murder that is taking place uh, in between this large um, union strike. Um, in a town where there are no police uh and and um uh it, it it's it's really interesting it plays a lot like a very old school like crpg it is very dialogue and decision focused um like you can get uh, your gun um but there's not like combat or fighting um and i, I think it's really it's really smart it it it, it lets you play in a, in in different archetypes um instead of having um there are like 
uh, how, how many would it be? Like 20 different skills that you can put points into. So you can spec into different, you know, you can spec into being a very intimidating physical type of character. You can spec into someone who's very intelligent and, and can read people. You can spec into uh, someone who is very good with their hands. Um, and, and that all unfolds in various ways as you try to solve, um, you try to solve this kind of gruesome murder um, while figuring out who you are. Also, you have amnesia. When, when you showed up in town a few days ago, you went on this huge bender and forgot everything about who you are, um, which kind of gives you a good uh, chance to kind of set up who this character yeah. you want, want to be. You got a lot of nerve coming in here. What? After uh, what you pulled? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what did I pull again? It's like, ah, you don't remember playing uh, roulette? Oh, of course I remember playing roulette. Nobody bets on orange. It's not even a real color. Well, that was part of my plan. You had a plan? Yes. I'll tell you about it. But first, tell me your name. Oh, oh, wait, I knew you spoilers were for ask. Disco Elysium. <laughs> Jeez, you're just spoiling everything today. Is that you write these, right? Uh-huh. Um, and so, you know, they the the game kind of plays out in a lot of dialogue stuff, and you're you're doing roles. You actually see dice on screen as you are doing roles. Oh, for that's cool. Things. Um, and uh, this is the 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 kind of revamp that just came out. The final cut um, brings it to consoles, and it's a free update on PC. Um, but what's nice is that they have gone in and voiced all of the dialogue in the game. It used to be a lot of it was dialogue was voiced, but not all of it. So now uh, all of the characters are voiced. And um, one of the interesting ways that they kind of have you tap into your skills is when you're talking to someone, your thoughts can talk to you. So the part of you that is uh, like your authorities, right? The the part of you that recognizes and sees or exerts authority will speak to you when you, you like. You, you can literally question yourself. Um, yeah, they kind of chime in, right? They, they're kind of like invisible um, skill roles that it's doing all the time. And you'll see when you get a good one. Um, like, oh, actually, you know, the part of me that knows electrochemistry, the part of me that knows how drugs interact with the body are saying, well, you know, this person kind of looks like he's on radiation medicine or what have you. Um, and those also speak to you. And so you, you get it, it's 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 really um, it, it plays off really well in terms of giving you um, kind of a strange take on the world right like one of the beginning things that you do one of your first skills is um get a lowdown on reality and so there's a lady that you can talk to who kind of like accepts that you have total amnesia um and just says okay cool it is the year uh 1951 and you are on revachal which just had a big revolution about a hundred years ago and here is how government and society kind of look right now and it it does a really good job of you of bringing you in and being like, okay, they, these are, you know, some of the city, some of the world building, some of like the races of people and the way that the world is set up. I, I think it's it's really, really smart. And if you like those types of games that are both A, a murder mystery, which always is good for me, um, but also something where um, you're kind of in a small spot, but there's a lot to do and there's a lot to maneuver around. I, I think it's really worth a try. Um, it's it's gorgeous. Like the voice acting really, really helps, right? Um it kind of feels like you're playing a tabletop game, right? Where people are doing the character voices and you're making decisions and, and doing roles and stuff. I, I think it's really solid. Um, very adult also. Uh, just letting you, letting you it's know. It's kind of a... I, I love that art style. The art style looks great. Yeah, it's 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 super cool. Um, I'm playing it on the PlayStation 5 right now, which is actually a little glitchy, unfortunately. A lot of the voice things don't uh, trigger, which is tough because that's one of the big... It's one of the big selling points on the new version, um, but it's 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 really cool. It's it's a really cool thing. Disco Elysium, right on, awesome. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for weird things today. Thank you guys, uh, Brian and Justin. Thank you for joining me. Hell's yeah. Uh, I'm Bryce, and this has been Weird Things. It's been weird. Hey, look at that. Good stuff, everybody. Uh, all righty. Uh, uh, we did get an email. I don't know if this is. Too big. Yeah. Let me um, take a tap. Yeah. If you need to take a break now, it'd be a time to do so. Oh, here. You go. Okay. Hey, Justin. Yo. Yo. Yo, 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 yo. Uh, so I will let you know. Yeah. Because we, we kind of have a similar route out here. Mine is a little longer. Uh-huh. Um, 
Th this Monday's, this time of day is good for getting out here. Um, tomorrow, um, Tuesday, say Tuesday evenings, yeah. it's a little more congested, um, especially if maybe it's a little earlier. So do you take 290 or William Can? Uh, I, cause I'm, cause I'm actually, I can kind of do six and one half dozen to the other. The, the highway is faster, but yeah, to, if it's, but, but if, if William Cannon can bring me down past that first big bottleneck, then it might actually save me some time. Um, oh, that's a good question. Local uh, Austin traffic report for I, I the think world. It, I think it won't because that when you're coming in on William Cannon, you're going to have to take a left turn there. And it'll bring you right where the congestion is. Not, I don't know that. I don't know. I, I don't go that way. I guess it, it depends on how much it's backed up into 290. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, uh, uh, but it, it gets, it, it, even out here, it, it does get a little more congested kind of near the, um, a, uh, after work hours. Uh, yeah. So just keep that in mind. Uh, for tomorrow, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, 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 I'm pretty good. Um, I mean, you're, 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 I mean, I don't have to close. be out here on Tuesdays anymore since our show died, but sure. Yeah. I just meant the show died. Tuesday. So now we're in the afterlife where only, uh, mm -hmm. file files are only stereo in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I will. I will say, uh, uh, I've seen a lot of comments being posted on Patreon to those audio files. I think most. I think a lot of it is some people asking about why they're split. Uh, but uh, but more more comments than I normally see on any of our other Patreon um, posts. Well, it's definitely the exclusive place to hear anything from the the uh, gaping maw of infinity that has uh, been left in the place of the Night Attack podcast. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, I think, um, yeah, th there will be a determination on exactly uh, how much and, and what for I'm, I'm, I'm out here. But it's definitely a quick hop and a hop and a skip from 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 my place, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, and I think you're in a good area. I mean, I haven't been out there, but I think you're in a good area. I think so too. Yeah. I know that my citizen. Yeah, are you on citizen? I can't do that. I've It's I a bad idea. It's not a good idea it's to a be bad using idea. citizen or any of the ring ring has a version of citizen. Um So basically the only reason why I feel like I can healthily deal with it is because I've worked in newsrooms that always had news wires. No, the police scanner. Oh, the scanner, yeah. So you would just it would just be a thing that happened in the background and you just realize in your average town, how many times something happens? There's a car accident. There's, you know, a, a domestic violence complaint, blah, 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 blah. You just kind of get a sense of it. I feel like that's the only way that I, like, I, 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 I've I tested out of the psychological damage that that app is designed to do to you because <laughs> it is basically a police scanner, but they only get the really dangerous and violent crimes, and then they... They well, put it on your phone. Yes. So it's crowdsourced, but where do you think half these people are getting shit? Like they're <laughs> they're getting they're getting shit because somebody's listening to the police wire. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, I can't I uh I back when I was doing training Lemon, I think we reported on it and just like citizen and um the like the the Amazon neighbors or neighborhood, whatever the one that one is called. So like that stuff's not that's not good for you. That's not good for any anybody. Those things are are not they're not going to make you safer. They like in terms of like citizen, citizen encourages people to like, "Hey, go to the scene of the crime and, and record it and on. live stream it." Yeah. yeah. And it's like that's I ca I cannot be a part of that. I know what part of town I live in. I can't be a part of 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 that. Um yeah, <laughs> I, I I only brought it up just to say that my citizen is now focused on Austin and mm. not Oakland. Oh, sure. And the crimes are just so quaint. It's just <laughs> all like they're overturned cars or, you know, a, a dog learned to read. I was going to say, it's like, insulted, insulted dog on 6th Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, 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 a dog's bandana, not in fashion. Oh, You're like, oh. That. What? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, there was a yeah, I, there was a TikTok that I saw uh, the other day about uh, about car break-ins in the San Francisco area and how just it's going to happen, um, especially if you have out of town plates, which immediately made me think of our friend Andrew Heaton, yes. who had that exact thing happen to him. Yeah, uh, it's really bad in Oakland too. Uh, uh, I think a, a lot of people just take the the precaution of uh, like leaving their doors open just you know so they don't have the back panel broken oh, out smash yeah yeah i mean the, the the cars were very rarely stolen uh but certainly you saw that 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 telltale spatter of pebbled glass uh on on the ground a lot mm. there was a lot of car brick and stuff it was the reason why i mean in in another world i would have loved to pack my car as i went uh, getting ready for the move, and that was not not to be done in in, in Oakland. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, I don't know. I'd only been out to uh, San Francisco, what that one time? No, was that I it? guess no, no. We we did we did no because we did one of the shows. So I, I was I've been out there twice. Yes. Um, and yeah, it definitely seems um, well, and also. Where both of our shows, yeah, both of our shows were in the Tenderloin. Yeah, yeah. Which is, that's that's the San Francisco that Fox News talks about. <laughs> like, they, like Fox News is not lying about San Francisco. Technically, <laughs> there is a part of San Francisco that is everything they say it is. It's the Tenderloin. Uh, now the rest of it is, you know, different and diverse. But like, boy, is the tender tender. There's there's no amount of stuff that you can talk about the tenderloin that will prepare you for the like every movie about new york that was like apocalyptic and and, and dystopic that is happening currently in the tenderloin in san francisco yeah all right go take your break justin yeah. uh just talking about yeah just talking about car break-ins and stuff Oh jeez! Uh, the yeah. Citizen app. Do you use the Citizen app or Nextdoor or anything? Uh, the, the Amazon Next door, yeah. neighbors. Yeah, um, I've I've started to dip into because we have Nextdoor for our our local community, but then uh, the property, uh, like Ring is trying to make like their version of of a similar thing. Yeah, neighbors. So so it's just straight up like uh, weird looking dude over here. Uh, what's this? And it's like that's 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 a spider web. <laughs> um and you're like well i don't know seems mysterious to me yeah we were we were we were talking a little bit about those i i, I can't i that's just too it's not good for me it's not good for anybody i don't i don't think it's oh, very in terms helpful. of like having something to obsess over uh that you know almost it, like, certainly doesn't amount to anything right and i i don't know what i what positives i get out of like using an app like that a lot um especially because i'm not a i'm a renter i live in an apartment complex i got needing to connect with people who are selling their beds or I don't know what have, to do have you this. have you disabled amber alerts on your phone uh no I still get them oh I think I might have disabled amber alerts but not silver alerts I got a blue uh, alert because no we, you know we, we apparently needed more alerts uh I, I must have because I I no I haven't gotten one in a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, it's so bizarre, man. It's like, 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 what are we getting out of this? Like, like, just, just our phones scream from time to time, and it's like, okay. Well, y yeah, and 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 because they're for different things, right? The Amber Alerts are for abducted children, which are, are it does is a bad thing. And if you're out on the road, you should keep an eye out for that Toyota Corolla, <laughs> right, um, in right. Plano, Texas. That's the other thing. Is That's they the don't, other thing. Is they they're don't always a million miles all. away, right? <laughs> it's just like, uh, oh, you know, it'd be great. Is uh, uh, please tell me, uh, in in Switzerland, somebody <laughs> fell down a tree, and it's uh, like, oh god. Are you talking about goodness. the alerts? Alerts, yes. yeah. Like, oh, because silver then, alert. Then there's silver yes. alerts, which is is that a duck elderly, elderly, wandered elderly. away. Which is like, it's good that those exist, but they should be a little more localized and and maybe use a little more for action for so also I, I, natural I, I, emergencies i disabled a bunch of those and and despite all that i got a blue alert which is basically blue. i mean i can't dress it up to the best of my understanding as anything other than yo they got one of our own and it's like it's it's oh like 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 blue alerts are enabled no a cop was shot so 
you better uh whether you care about kids or old people shut up this one is about a guy who killed a cop wow. uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get him and i'm like okay i didn't i didn't okay I've, okay I, I, it, yeah it, this 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 extended rpg I, i'm not i didn't sign up for uh yeah i had not seen the blue alerts but uh uh man you would think that they would have used some of those emergency alerts during like the winter storm that we just had but they didn't yeah they didn't did they? you would think they would be like hey we're gonna do the rolling power outs or hey we're well, and plus also like the advice <laughs> that up? they gave us uh, was was objectively the opposite of the things that we should have been doing. Where it's just like, whatever you do, let those faucets drip, psych. Well, you would have water, except for all y'all let your faucets drip too much. Well, I, I think whether we dripped or not, those faucets would have would have burst. I don't know. Uh, no, they were all like, I thought you were like, oh, the, the advice they gave us was so opposite. They were all like, go outside, <laughs> live outside without shoes. <laughs> all right. So we, we did get an email for, for after things. Let's go. Let's do it. Ready. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, live in Austin, Texas, joined with Brian Brushwood. Brian, where are you coming in from today? Uh, uh, ooh, looks left, looks right. Austin, Texas. Oh, awesome. And our friend Justin Robert Young. Hi, Justin. Where are you coming in from today? Austin, Texas. <gasps> what? The yeah. same Austin, Texas? We should be in the same studio is where we should be. Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is uh, the show about being creative professionals and and just hanging out. We got a we got an email from Tim, um, who has a weird tank question for us. Uh, Tim, oh writes, yeah. Hi guys. After many years, I continue to love the podcast each and every week. Thanks for the chance to talk about space, Elon Musk's uh, spiders, etc. Um, uh, my favorite part is after things where you give insight and advice about life as creative. I have a weird tank question. Uh, for some background, for 12 years, I've made a living as a tutor or an academic coach when I'm feeling pretentious, working with college-bound high school juniors and seniors in admission test prep and college essay writing and editing. I've only added the college essay as a service in the past three years, and I've seen plenty of growth. My idea is I would like to take the college essay services online and asynchronous. I imagine a site offering three tiers of college essay editing at competitive prices from basic structural and grammar or punctuation editing to Full service narrative restructuring and multiple essay writing to find the best uh, the best one, um, uh, which is what uh, he does now with live synchronous experience with the students. Uh, I see four reasons to do this: to expand to a larger market, uh, which is more which would be greater than my local Minneapolis market; uh, two, to be able to serve more students in the same amount of time; uh, three, to give myself more flexible hours; and four, the opportunity to scale. So Tim's question is: Where should I start? I could figure out a brand identity, design a curriculum, a, a website, connect it to scheduling and billing services, market it, do SEO and see how it goes. But I'm pretty uneducated when it comes to a business, even though even as I've run my own freelance business for years, I've considered hiring a business coach or a mentor or consultant. Um, but that seems premature and I don't know what questions to ask them. I'd like to take classes, but I don't know how to choose. And there are countless thousands of offerings on dozens of sites, many with great reviews. Should I take an online business class, a startup class, an entrepreneur class or what? Thanks guys. And keep up the awesome work and content, Tim. Uh, all right. So as everybody formulates their actual advice, let me just say that at one time, I don't even know how this happened, but somebody at one of the TMS weekends in Vegas was like, Hey, I, I would really like it if you could uh, look over my daughter's uh, college essay because I think she was applying to a journalism school or something like that. And uh, I, I edited this poor girl's college essay while just horrendously crossfaded at the plaza <laughs> pool. Uh, I hope she got into college. Uh, but it is, it is definitely a very serious thing, although I, I question how serious her parents took it considering that they wanted to put me in charge of it. Uh, that being said, Brian, it feels like this guy knows exactly what his business is. He literally just wants to build a window to the world, and that should be something that he could get done in a weekend. This is one of those weird things where if, if uh, and we can deconstruct the email, but what I heard was, I'm an expert, I'm an expert, I'm an expert, I'm an expert. I want 
to get my word out to the world about my expertise. And I don't want to do it one-on-one -on -one real time. Um, mm. I'm thinking about hiring another expert or another type of expert, yeah. or a third type of expert or a fourth type of expert, because it, I mean, what do I know about any of this? And it's like, <laughs> you, you, you can't. Uh, uh, so I would say begin with uh, recording one of your one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, perhaps if somebody is uh, financially strapped or whatever, you say, hey, I will give you a full tutorial. Only thing I ask, we'll make sure to block your face out, never mention your name or whatever. Like, I'm just going to do my gig, but just let me, let me use it uh, and, and make them available as tutorials. So uh, in that regard, congrats, you now have product and you can put that out there to virtualize your expertise to the world. Next from that, you start to, you get somebody that you're working with to a level where it's like without even having to consult you, they already know what you're going to say. And we've talked about this before. Like I've listened to so much Dave Ramsey show that it's like, I could tell you everything is going to say about any financial question uh, in the world. Uh, once you have that, I mean, maybe, maybe you write someone or, 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 or have a team underneath you that does it. But, but if your goal is to virtualize your advice and, uh, scale it up, uh, it's not rocket science. I mean, I would say, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, take what you're doing now and ju just take your first step, right? Okay. So you're offering... Uh, so, you know, it's live synchronous and you would like to get to uh, asynchronous and remote. Well, uh, just start with remote synchronous, right? What can you do with someone over a teleconference on Zoom or on Skype, right? What, what would you charge? How does that look like? How does it look like when you're not in the same place? Because rather than making the jump in both ways, I, I would say take one of those two and make that change first, right? What does it look like to get Tim on Skype, or, or what does it take look like to get Tim via email, um, and and go from there, right? I, I, just just so you get a better sense of what it looks like when you're operating in those different styles, that is different from what you're doing. I mean, does that does that track at all? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's good that he's got a plan, but I think the next step is instead of making both feet forward, pick one foot. Well, I, I think he's just. He's overthinking it. I mean, there's, there's number one, I think he's just totally overthinking it. You've got a business. He's got a business where he is the consultant for kids that are getting into college. He has presumably done this for uh, uh, some number of years. He makes a living doing it or makes at least enough of a living that he continues to do it. And uh, now he would like to expand. So congratulations, man. You've done the hard part. You've <laughs> priced everything out. You've got the experience. And now you have the resume. The only thing I think you need to do, and it sounds like what, you, what he wants to do is, uh, all right, here, pause here. I think that we tend to conflate things when we start thinking about goals and where we want to go. That we think of, oh, okay, well, this is a whole new thing. This is a new branch. It might eventually become that, but right now, he would probably just like, hey, can in my off time, the, 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 in, in a way that doesn't require me meeting anybody, could I edit somebody's essay on my Saturdays and make X amount of money? If that's the case, then you just want to open up that trickle. You want, you want those things to just kind of roll down to you. And if that's the case, man, this is a one page website that you could probably set up today. And you say, my name is blank. I have worked for this long and not testimonials. You can have those there, but you then say, here are the colleges that I have worked with people who have gotten into. Mm. And so you list all those, and I'll bet you that that's an impressive list. I'll bet you when you, when you put all of them together, you can have that. And then at that point, I mean, he must know how to market himself in the business that he's doing yeah. now. And then at that point, say, email me for consultation. They Online. can email. I'm sure. Look, if you want to step your game up, you can make it a web form. Uh, and at that point you say, Hey, look, if your kid is, is looking for this submission at this time, I can line edit it. I can do a consultation. Here's what that costs. What would you be interested in? Boom. Like that's not optimized. That's not the best thing. That's not the, the perfect way to do it. But, but if you want to do is just 
like poke a hole in the internet and let some of that business trickle in. That's something that can happen within 12 hours. And I think the big goal is to take something you're doing anyway, and then figure out like, uh, okay, what are the core beliefs, the tenants that uh, I've never paused to figure out? For example, like, uh, let's say uh, 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 we might be drifting away from your particular use case, but let's say, for example, you, you punch up essays, um, press record and do a screen capture and just say, hey, it's so-and-so day. I'm going to take about 30 minutes to punch up this essay as I'm going through. I noticed these kind of words. These are terrible words. Don't use these words. I like this sentence because it starts with uh, seven verbs in a row, which is very unusual. Uh, yeah, here's another thing. Here's another thing. And then you stop record. Then you do it again, and you don't publish any of this. You, you, maybe you never publish any of this. But then you press record again, and then you find yourself saying things like, as I've said many many times crush those idioms and then all of a sudden you you discover like oh wait you know when you get a translation when you get a transcript of your own talking you're like oh i i have things that i say crush those idioms or whatever uh and then uh, and then and then after a while you discover like right now you're already operating underneath a formula uh uh if you press record it gets a lot easier and, and you don't have to have somebody else sit and watch you all the time to tell you what your formula is. Yeah. And, and, and there's, I, I, I think it, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm started I'm, with seven verbs. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to get uh, ahead of my, ahead of myself, but like, I, I think that there's a lot you can do with this. Like, like you said, Brian, in terms of recording yourself, so you figure out your own formula. But also, you know, there is this is a, the 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 services that you provide are very um, concrete and they're very substantive. There is, um, um, I, I would think that there would be a lot of um, demand on, say, social media. I think of on TikTok. There are people that I follow on TikTok that offer advice or guidance or whatever, and they're trying to get you to by, you know, some consulting time with them. Um, but they say, hey, here's the five things that you can do to do this better yeah. or whatever. I think that there's, you, I'm sure, have a, a vast pool of things that you can dip in there in terms of attracting and having an outward-facing thing. But, but yeah, just start start simple. Start, um, you know, I, I, go online, offer an online version and see what that looks like. See what, because I think the rest of the stuff, I think you've got just, a good just idea. Just think about it via email. Yeah. Start via email. This is all just email me. We'll figure it out. You don't, you don't even need, need to list anything. I mean, I, I don't know how much you guys remember writing essays to, to get into college, but that shit is uh, inscrutable. Like, like it is, it is mysterious. It is a, 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 a crazy thing for which you have no idea. Nobody around you has any idea what is effective and what isn't. It's not like when you get into college, they're like, Thank God in your essay, you wrote blah, 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 blah. Does it matter? Does it not matter? Is it going to keep me out if I write a really bad one? Is it going to put me in if my, my other stuff isn't as good? So it's like, congratulations, man. You're a shaman. You know answers that other people do not. And if I were you, what I would do, what, if, if I was going to bone up on anything, I would bone up on SEO. And I would say for, or not even SEO, for Google ad stuff, and the, the search terms that I would buy are whatever, find your most impressive colleges that you've gotten, that people have gotten into, like Yale essay requirements or good Yale essay, whatever. Things that people are searching yeah. when they are panicked about whether or not this is going to be the right thing. What and is then, a good college essay? Boom, yeah. Right up there, essay tutor uh, has gotten people into Yale. Like, that's the website that they're going to they're going to get to go to you and you are going to be able to do it and and guess what everything you tell them no one's going to be able to tell you no that's a terrible <laughs> idea because right. you're a shaman you right. know the thing that nobody else this knows is, this is and, specifically and, and, i think people don't shop around and and the, uh, the only weak spot is like well, well i don't have a book on how to i uh, sit down and write a book like like you don't, it's already in you it's already yeah. in you just yeah. record it and then and then have everything transcribed it'll cost you all of five dollars somebody in india will do it for you then type in search uh, uh, control f for again colon and then and then whatever whatever you keep seeing popping up 
guess what? Those are your, those are your cornerstones. Those are your tent poles. And, and in terms of uh, uh, Tim's question about, you know, hiring consultants or, or whatever, no, no, I mean, no, no, no. Consultants learn, are just, no, 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 no. You should be teaching them, not the other way around. Uh, um, I mean, the the only thing I would say is like, if you, you are get them all into college, all these consultants, we're getting you into college again. If, if there's a part of the business that you are not sure about, uh, uh, like how how do how do taxes work? If you are dealing, if you're in Minneapolis and you're dealing with someone in California or what have you, I don't know that answer. He might not know that answer. That might be worth a hundred dollars to. Sit down with a CPA and say, "What would it?" Tax what, professionals uh, and stuff. CPAs sure. right. are different. Like, yeah, correct. Uh, but uh, in terms uh, of if, like if, asking if, for business help, if the toilet is overflowing, I call a plumber. If my taxes are being audited, I call a CPA. Whatever. Um, if 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 I detect a gap between what I have and what I want, a consultant is the third most offensive C word I can think of. And I do not recommend a consultant of any variety. I mean, we realize he is a consult. What's that? He's he an academic he consult. is a consult. Well, yeah. Yeah. Which is why he shouldn't be hiring other consultants. Yeah. I mean, how would you feel if you hired a plumber to handle your, your exploding thing? And he's by, like, by the way, by hold the way, on, we, 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 I'm going to hire did a just plumber. Find a link, so I do need a plumber recommendation, uh, but okay. uh, I got one, right, but, 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 but how are you going to feel when that guy shows up and goes, Ooh, let me call my plumber. <laughs> it's like, but, but why did you, I call yeah. you? But yeah. it, it just, just, just to devil's advocate, just a little bit, right? This is, this is Tim going into a, a realm of the business that he hasn't done before. Do you think that a business person who might have experience doing one on, you know, do, working in a business like this might be able to I, offer I, anything? I, I will say, um, for what he wants to do, the initiative and the follow through that it will take to look stuff up will be greatly beneficial. If you eventually in your search find that like the people that you, you keep talking to or reading about, if they're like, yeah, you know, like I, uh, 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 when I first started, I did this, that, and the other, and I set up all these things. I actually wound up paying for a half hour with this guy and it helped me a lot. He charged me, it was a reasonable rate. And we, it, 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 it knocked a lot of this stuff out that was like really slow and tedious. And I could have spent a lot more time screwing around with it. Then go to that guy. But if you're just Googling broad, like make my dream happen. Right. Uh, person. Sure. Are you an like, expert? Let's take your expertise and make a best-selling book out of it. It's me, the guy who is going to give you the same advice as everyone else. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, uh, at this stage, it sounds like what you want to do is virtualize an element of your business. You've got enough at your fingertips to go begin that process. From there, network with other people that might be doing some of the same stuff. Google, read. Like The, the good news is there's a lot of information out there. You can find a lot of these lessons without them being spoon-fed to you. So uh, here's another thing. Um... Free advice, um, free advice is more free than one might think, especially if you provide value. Um, recently, there's a project that I'm working on that is outside of my traditional domain. And I've written to people saying, I've respected your work for years. This is outside of my domain. It seems to be in your domain. Whatever thoughts you have would be great. And some of them have responded with versions of this is great. Consider doing X, Y, and Z. Others have responded with, hold on, let me make a call. And whatever it is, um, I have found that there's exactly no cost to reaching out and providing value and saying, here's what I'm trying to do. And it seems similar to what you're trying to do in this way. Hmm. Uh, e even in a pretty competitive personal field like this yes maybe uh, as a matter of fact so so in this case if what he's trying to do is get people into yale go look up who's best at getting people into harvard go look up people who are best at getting people into medical school go look up people who are best in getting people into uh phillips exeter academy or whatever like they're all different and none of them are going to feel threatened uh but all of them 
will see the value in what you're doing and correct you. If you go to somebody like, all right, if two people are both in on the same street and one guy opens a strawberry shop and then the guy next door opens a strawberry shop and, and asks him like, hey, how many strawberries do you buy per month? And how much is your rent? And stuff like that. Then you're like, oh my God, like, no, I'm not going to tell you. You're just going to eat into my business here. But when you're virtualized and if you're primarily, this is like a psychological thing, I think. If you're talking to people that by and large are working by themselves or working out of their own home and somebody says, my God, you've got it all. Can you explain to me some of the lessons that you've learned? Cause you're really wise. They're going to say yes. Or at the very least give you the like, the, the, the nickel tour of like, hey, when I was starting, the thing I wish I would have known right off the bat was X, Y, Z. See you later. Let me know. Right. Like th that kind of stuff, which is really, um, which is really, uh, 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 I, I think, pretty good information often. Like that, that's available. Uh, reach out. And again, even if like the worst thing that can happen is that they immediately delete your email and you just never hear from them, at which right. point you're going to forget about it really quick. Yeah. And plus also like, Pretty much nobody ever resents getting an email saying, hey, I'm working on this thing. And one time on this one podcast so long ago, you said the following. And that really had an impact on me. Do you mind if I quote you for this thing? Uh, I'd be happy to send you the whole thing if you'd like to look at it. And then, you know, now the new worst case is like, whatever, kid, say, say whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, and, and the best case is, uh, let me see. What do you got? What did, yeah. uh, what you got there? Uh, yeah. Cool. Network, uh, free resource, yeah. and, 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 and it's so cheesy. It's so cheesy. It's one so, page website. One page website. It's, yeah, it's have a very short website. It's it's so not what Justin and I want to be known as as the networking guys. But but fart out loud if that doesn't actually work. I mean, like like it's not who you know very well. It's who you know well enough to recommend. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would not be surprised if there was like a LinkedIn, uh, someone who uh, I, I, I won't name, but uh, uh, told me that uh, LinkedIn, I guess one of the big ways LinkedIn makes money is that you can pay to contact people on LinkedIn. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who provide education, um, admissions assistance, who you could try to find those groups and maybe make directed messaging to to get some of this information if you have the time, but you, you are, you already have a Tim is our Tim has already done the business in person. I think figuring out the vote, the, I could see, I could see two things being the problem, either a weird business logistics part of this of like taxes or, or what have you. I don't know. Or the technical side of how do I virtualize this? And that's, that is also a thing where, well, you can, you'll figure out the tech stuff, right? The, a lot of people know the tech stuff and that'll be an even easier thing for you to go and say, Hey, I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do this with this person. Um, you know, tech stuff. What are the things that I can do where you're not even talking to your competitor? You're talking to, you could just reach out to someone who knows a lot about tech and work into that. I, I will say this when it comes to buying Google ads or Facebook ads or anything like that, experiment yourself because you are going to burn a lot of money. It is a, a big efficient. wood chipper of cash. It is, a, it is an efficient market. Yeah. Uh, uh, but at least you will understand the, 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 the scope of it. Uh, you will get a sense of like how fast money goes real quick. When you pay those consultants, like that is 10x. They need a lot of darts to hit because they need to prove that they're going to do something. And to do that, they need a lot of money to prove that they can do something. So it's like, uh, all I would say is like the most successful company that I was ever around that involved Google ads was the go game. And what the go game cracked with their own Google ad stuff was understanding that you're not buying the ad words that describe you you're buying the ad words that describe the problem that somebody is Googling to solve. So like for the Go game, they had a great thing on last minute team building city. Like that, so that was like a niche that they could fill or like 15 person team building city uh, that, that, we, that we already did a lot of business in. 
that's what you want to do and not just fun team building. Like maybe somebody's Googling that, but most likely they're going to be thinking about it. So think about it from the point of view of parents and kids when they are thinking about this very vexing problem, what are they Googling to help solve it? Buy those ad words and put your email out there. Make money. Uh, likewise, there is whatever it is you want from a consultant. You want it because it's a simple transaction, or at least that's the way it's promised. Um, in real life, whatever it is the consultant can find out or know, almost certainly one of your heroes does know. And you could get it straight from one of your heroes by providing value. And that begins with, hey, I have nothing to ask of you. I have nothing that I need your help for. I just want you to know that in this episode of this thing, you said a thing and that really affected me deeply. I really appreciate what you do. And then get ready for a polite thank you. Then again, like, wow, it's been a few months. And this time, this really, really appreciated me. Maybe, or, 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 or I really appreciated this. Maybe think of this thing I'm doing. Maybe they'll notice, maybe they won't. And then third, fourth time where pretty much you're just the guy who shows up to say how great they are and how hard you're listening. And then you get to a difficult question. It's like, well, I'm trying to resolve because before you've said this and now you're saying this, and which one do you think applies to this? And now you've completely leapfrogged the consultant and now you have one of your heroes who's taking on thoughtfully the conundrum that, that you're dealing with. And, and they will give you advice that will blow your mind. That will say, uh, yeah, no, I think you're onto something here. I wouldn't do it that way. Have you thought about phrasing it that way? And then all of a sudden you're on phone calls with them and it costs you nothing except for, except for unironic uh, appreciation of their work. Here we go. Um, uh, any last advice for Tim? I think we gave him, I, I hope, Tim, please write in and let us know yes. uh, how helpful this was. Tim, thank you for listening. Uh, we hope that you have tremendous success. And uh, I hope that you bear the guilt for putting all these kids under <laughs> tremendous financial debt for the rest of their life. Yeah, also, screw colleges. Uh, I don't think I'll send my kids to any of them. They're terrible. Nobody should go into student debt. I will say this. I, I, I very much enjoyed uh, uh, SAT prep. Uh, did he say he does SAT prep? Or? Uh, I believe SAS. SAT or ACT is, yeah, is some prep, stuff that he yeah. helps with. Yeah, I was I crushed the prep ones, and then I I crumbled like a like a cookie under pressure when I actually had to take them. <laughs> Alrighty, well uh, that'll do it for after things today. Thank you, Brian and Justin. I'm oh, yeah. I'm in Bryce. It's been after. Ah! Awesome. Hey, good stuff, everybody. Mm, mm, we will be back mm, in about mm. uh, two and a half hours for. Cord killer, we've got Ayaz Akhtar on today. Oh, yeah. Ayaz. Uh, and then, who knows? I don't know what's happening tomorrow. So, I don't know. Hope nobody, you guys, knows. nobody knows. Nobody knows. All right, I mean, everybody. Some, some, some people know what, what's been happening, if mm. anything has already been happening. Mm. There we go. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.